Hello sir, good morning. Hello, morning. Sir, you're looking really handsome <laughs> and we've seen you in the posters of the film also. Okay. Are you also debuting as an actor, sir? No, no, not at all, not at all. Because <laughs> my only passion is music and... Uh, but since Jan, I've been into this fitness uh, training oh. and uh, just wanted to pull down my weight because I was in, I was obese. I was 117, so that oh. was like too much. I, I want to bring it down. Of course, it was an every year resolution, but uh, <laughs> Jan, Jan first I used to start and Jan second I used to, <laughs> you know, forget it and get along with my regular stuff. So I thought, okay, this year I should not leave it because we do have a practice of uh, taking our blood checkup every six months once. So we had a blood checkup uh, mm. quite often, and last last December, 2016 December, we had a blood checkup, and I was in a kind of a, a pre-diabetic stage. Oh. So I thought, like, okay, this is the right time to pull down. Yeah. Take us through a little bit about your composing process. Yeah. There are several processes in composing. Yeah. You know, people who work on music over Skype. So many, yeah. so many different yeah. things yeah. have happened. But we know that you're a little old-fashioned in a good yeah. way yeah. in yeah. terms of sitting with yeah. the lyricist yeah. Yeah. and yeah. Yeah. doing spot composing. Yeah. So talk to us about that process and how it enriches your music. Yeah, as you said, I love the linear process of uh, composition as it was in early days, in the early 70s, 80s. And because I, uh, I don't know, because I haven't worked with uh, Raja sir, but I've been hearing from people that he used to work just with a, just with a basic harmonium and he used to produce tunes with that. So uh, more or less, my kind of work is is like that only. Mm. And uh, I used to uh, sit with my keyboard, and uh, we used to have a spot composing session with the director of the film, and and of course with the lyricist of the song. So we just discuss about the situation and about the characterization of the film and then the, what, what, what is the need of the song in a film and, and lyrically what has to be conveyed in a song. Everything we just put it together and we try to crack a tune. So like that it happens. It is a proper linear way of composing. Mm. Is it time consuming also sir? Because yes it is, yes it is but uh, I love this way because it is just a very linear way and uh, I love the way the song evolves and the song um, blossoms and uh, uh, because the first listener of the tune it will be me and 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 that kind of that uh, fresh feel no uh, when I get a fresh tune and then when I, when I just play it on my keyboard and I, and as a listener as a music listener I'm listening to that tune for the first time and that gives me a big high. Also, uh, is it fair to say that you don't have a, a song bank system where you don't have t tunes that are already... Of course, I do have that also. Okay. Uh, I do have a... Because uh, uh, way back in 2004 or five, I believe, I used to have a set of bank tunes, mm -hmm. uh, like I used to have some 80 to 100 Pallavis recorded. Mm -hmm. Just the Pallavis, mm -hmm. I mean, which just runs for, you know, one and a half minute, two minutes of a mm -hmm. song where you can just monitor the gist of a song, what, what is it talking about, and even musically how it has been, you know, placed out. So uh, I had a practice of that, but I think post minor things have mm -hmm. uh, changed and, and, I, and I like this proper linear way System. of uh, composing things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you spoke about minor. Yep. So that after minor and maybe <coughs> Kumki is Iman 2.0, if you can <laughs> yeah, call it yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, what <coughs> difference did Iman do in his musical style that appealed to people post minor. Was yeah, it also a, a thing of you being at the right place at the right time because Tamil cinema was opening up to more realistic scripts at that point of time? I think I would say that because uh, right before minor, I haven't experienced a proper romantic script because a music director, uh, to get the proper focus, I think he needs a proper romantic script. An art director needs a period film. An action, a stunt mm -hmm. choreographer needs a proper masalas, stunt, I mean, a commercial film, a film which has more of action in it. So like that, when it comes to a music composer, I think he needs a proper romantic script. Mm -hmm. So where, uh, the, the, in fact, the musicality of the film is being proposed and uh, and we get the name out of it. Right. And uh, so before Maina, of course, I've done many films, but but like more where like, you know, commercial films mm -hmm. and which has more of uh, action, comedy in it. So like wherever the song comes, that, that becomes a big bump mm -hmm. in the script. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I was just looking for the proper breakthrough, and which happened through Mr. Prabhu Solomon, sir. And even though Maina was not the first film for director Prabhu Solomon, sir, he has done sound films before. Yeah. And he was also more or less on the 
same on page. the on the same page yeah. because he was also uh, doing more of action films and 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 he was not into this yeah. love romantic zone yeah. so he was also into that and uh, was also into the same zone so everything fell in place when you look at yourself as a composer uh, is it fair to call yourself a little more rhythm based composer rather than a, a, mel- a melody composer after minor actually after minor i was more of melody, melody based melody yeah. based maybe before i was more of uh, rhythm rhythm oriented uh, that too because of the demands uh, of my of, of, of the script and and then the demands of the director whom i uh, worked with but it's not that you can do romance all the time right so yeah, you have yeah. done your bit of commercial yeah, big yeah, films even yeah, after that yeah. so is when you pick <coughs> those films and smaller films yeah. do you consciously look at uh, striking a balance uh actually i don't see the difference between big and small because every friday the cinema decide, decides which is big and which is small even if even in the i mean in terms of budget or maybe in terms of casting the film may be big but every friday the audience uh, decide which is big and which is small so i don't believe on that but uh, whatever the script comes i mean on my way and which really appeals me i uh, which which script drives me okay this is the film which you got to do those films i do even like bigger films with like uh, you know uh, maybe uh, not so a proper script for music if it is like on my way i i, I had said no to that also mm. so uh, it is not that so it is like uh, it's just a basic instinct because at that point of time you feel okay this is a film okay you have to do and you just go go ahead working for the film uh, at least after this shift that we spoke about you know where you uh, tended towards the melodic side of you know yeah, you are, yeah. You are, uh, after that when you have to compose a song for instance like Dang- danganaka yeah. does it does it does it come from a different place compared to let's say earlier not like that because here whatever we do we just take it from the script mm-hmm. because here we have a uh, we had a characterization like ravi uh, jaim ravi the film he is a tr uh, tr rasigar tr fan so from that point we took over and then okay uh, because initially they had a point like okay we need to have an uh, opening song yeah. so when it comes to opening song opening song it is just a mundane you know mm-hmm. uh, situation like mm-hmm. what you do in a opening what song okay, of course it has to be racy that we yeah. can understand but lyrically what has to be conveyed mm-hmm. you just simply can't glorify the hero mm-hmm. because even the audience are like really More really really yeah. fell up of that yeah. so you have to come up with something interesting so we had a point like okay uh, jame ravi sir is a is a tr fan mm-hmm. so we just utilize that point mm-hmm. and we just um, build, build it up to a 4 minute song so that's how dhandanaka came up with mm-hmm. so there are many other composers who take only a very few projects yeah. but you are among the other <coughs> among the uh, popular popular yeah. music composers who take a, take on a lot of projects yeah. is it difficult to manage your time between all this sir actually i get more time in fact it is <laughs> not uh, it is not that because uh, Are you working uh, like Yes I am yes. Yes. <laughs> yes of course I, I don't want to deny that because I used to come like uh because due to my workouts uh, a bit delayed to my study I used to come by 10 o'clock but, but earlier I used to be here by 7:30 8 in the morning okay. and uh I go till 10 10:30 11 mm. so so maybe from this year I've just, I've just I've just so, so I've just restricted like okay morning 10 to evening 10 so that'll oh, that'll just 12 will, hours. Yeah, just 12 <laughs> so so like within that time of course I do have a lot of time to in fact to you know uh, because I do my mix down and and even my own mastering for my own songs yeah. so um, uh, so it, it starts from the basic composition uh, stage and then to the recording process the voice mixing the mix master and even the 5.1 7.1 mix master for a film mm. so of course it, it just consumes a lot of time but i really enjoy my work because this is uh, this is the kind of stage and and the work i've been admired mm-hmm. uh, for a long time and i and i, and I just love each and every inch of it mm-hmm. so it's i'm i'm to, i'm i'm like totally so passionate about this yeah. work so so also we spoke about your routine you know the <coughs> process of which you, uh, how you compose a song yeah. so are there days where you come and you sit in the director's there and yeah. nothing just comes there's yeah. no tune yes yes many 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 yeah. there are many uh we just sit to crack a tune and sometimes it doesn't happen hmm. uh, totally uh, and you uh, can't force it yeah and you can't force it yeah. okay what we do is we just chit chat for a while <laughs> <laughs> have some Pongal nice you have <laughs> pongal only in the morning that is only for that <laughs> proper solomon sir yeah. not with the other so like uh, i used to have my composing sessions only later in the evening so we st- we start by 5 o'clock in the evening and then it just goes around so in case if that day is not working we just chit chat have some you know have some rubbish talk <laughs> and then get away with the day and we just okay let's try it out tomorrow so 
Sir, you mentioned about doing rural based films in fact yeah. at this point you yeah. mentioned about telling lakshman that so uh, sometimes do you think if you take on more films in the same genre there's a chance that you might get stereotyped in that zone well, of course yes but uh, when you just look from an aerial point of view of course there are many other composers than me and uh, i've been at times yes i've been typecasted as okay he's a person who who will be doing more of uh, you know uh, rural based films and who is very popular with village mm. uh, style of uh, music and of course i do love that identity because i've been sticking to my roots and i want to deliver music which is which is very very rooted which is ethnic and which shows the culture of our own of our own soil mm. so that is what uh, i've been looking for and that kind of identity i really uh, invite that and, I, and 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 it is so pleasing to me at the same time of course i want to break the rules where i you know the songs like sendura mm-hmm. or the songs like adagi asura the hot party you know which shows a different uh, uh, different so, yeah. different side of iman which is basically me because i'm a totally you know city 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 yeah. city chennai boy city and yeah, city based so this uh, in fact this village music is something alienated to me mm. but i've been trying myself hard to adapt to that yeah. and which which like you know uh, just from the audience side they feel okay this is this is his own identity yeah. in a way i feel happy yeah. at the same time wherever i get the break point to break it i get the opportunity and i work on that yeah. uh, do you how do you do that sir because you've mentioned you try to adapt to that is yeah. by is it by roping in uh, singers is it by roping in musicians or a particular instrument how do you get into that zone which is actually not yours uh, not only about the orchestration point of it just with a basic melody because i see that each and every melodic structure of a song without without those accompanying instruments just with the basic mm. uh, tune it has to be soulful it has to touch your heart so that is a basic point and even that rural based melodic structure that has to be felt even in the basic melodic structure of the song so i feel that uh, even the even the uh, you know just just a basic tune that that needs that kind of lyric the vocal and even the overall presentation which has to be earthy i think uh, maybe uh, our own legends like you know msv sir and kv mahadevan sir and of course uh, raja sir have done a lot of uh, uh, rural stuff and uh, i think that they have just created a, a big database for us and just to follow that itself i think that is more than enough for for sony music right so another question uh, how do you, what is your system to understand if a song is really worked or not you know to to get for instance youtube views yeah uh, wh- what do you look at <clears> to understand you know how much the audience is i think that scenario is just for the for the reason 5 to 6 years but before yeah. that because the time when i was introduced it was yeah. way back in 2001 that with tamran you you just actually don't know what is happening to your song <laughs> because you don't have a social network yeah. medium so what happens is okay if your song is being played on radio. on all like fm stations yeah. even at that time we just had only all india radio <laughs> and uh, at that time only i think uh, right with my third film whistle yeah. i yeah. think at point at adagi also yeah. when the song came only at that point even the fm stations were blooming yeah. at that time only surin fm and yeah. radio mirchi were just yeah. popping in so i i thought like okay um, you know what will be the mode of understanding my music or what happens when it just releases the audio releases and 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 how the how the audience are going to take it back so uh, so what happens is i used to i uh, mean uh, one particular situation i'd love to recall in traffic signal mm-hmm. yeah. yeah traffic signals where you just go and wait for the signal in the car you have a you know a parallel car or a parallel uh, a driver or or, or just an an auto playing your song yeah. on the signal only at that point you know okay a parallel car is a car by your side yeah. just listening to your song yeah. okay this song seems to be a hit yeah. mm-hmm. only by that you know uh, signs you just, uh, you just you mm-hmm. so only only like through that you know okay your song is popular yeah. mm-hmm. but uh, now you just uh, upload a song on a youtube and uh, you just tweet about your song you just status uh, upload your song on your on your facebook or or any social medium uh instantly you come to know about the song's verdict whether it's working or not with yeah. the audience so i think now it is far far better right. than before you know the instant appeal yeah. of of a song 
so way back it is quite difficult it takes really two to three months of the time the point where the the album release and then okay is it really working hmm. or not so yeah uh, so with respect to uh, you mentioned youtube views just now so i just want to draw you to one fact did you know that the unmela kanna song is among the top youtube songs in tamil yeah. Yeah, yeah of course i do know because i do get the right. official updates from sony music so okay <laughs> so i used to know yeah i've so, been monitoring that out yes right 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 so so when a song this this is an exception of course because it's a super hit film but when a song of yours in which you put in a lot of hard work features in a film that does not do quite well at the box office as much as you had desired what do you tell yourself sir of course there are songs even recently there's a song called ye nadi ni enna ipdi aakana but that is like a a song which is like very very close to my heart mm-hmm. because that but but like that song went to an unnoticed film mm-hmm. a film called adaga patta de maga janagle and uh, of course the people the in for the audio listeners they know the song mm-hmm. but if the if the film would have uh, you know done bigger mm-hmm. of course the audience would have related it more mm-hmm. um but of course there are uh, situations here and there mm-hmm. but on the whole i just see okay that is my work i've done justice to it to it in fact i i just enjoyed working on the song and right of, right from the point the album and then the song gets released i get totally disjointed from that uh, film, right. from that film from that zone so that is what happens every time whenever an album releases just a day back uh, this uh, nenjul tuni virundal album got released now i'm totally disjointed from that album so whatever positive whatever negative happens to that album it is not in my head now mm. so uh, so that like that that particular uh, aspect makes me to keep on move with the next project and keep keep on working with a fresh mind and with with a lot of positive energy uh, even so uh, when we talk about you know uh, the last 10 years or yeah. say even 5 years when yeah. we take that uh, uh, your compositions have played a big part in the rise of stars like shivakartikeyan yeah. and vijay sethupathi and all that as a composer uh, is there something is there a combination that you have to develop with with a star also just like the director not like that because uh, when i worked with shiva uh, for manam kuti parave mm. the first time when we worked he was just a newcomer mm. because at that time even that his first film merina was not released mm, yeah. it was just under production yeah. so um, um and even when i was working with rummy with mm. mr vijay sethupathi even at that time even pizza was not released mm. so we uh, i did kuda mala kuda with mm. uh, with uh, vijay mm. sethupathi and of course worked for manam kuti parave and then later uh, of course the heroes with their own talents and even the music did well at the uh, with with the listeners everything i think just went hand in hand and then later when we just collaborate with the same artists mm-hmm. again yeah. and again at that point at that point of time it becomes a stress yeah yeah because in fact your previous hits uh, mm-hmm. stand as a big nightmare yeah. you know <laughs> in front of you and and you have to cope up every time right um sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't i think it's just a roller coaster right everything you but you does it become a it. brand like that of course it does it, it does, does uh, from the listeners point of view yes they do have some assumption okay what this team will do what this music director will do with this particular hero when he collaborates again i think that kind of uh, that just raises a curiosity that what builds builds up our business also yeah, so correct, yeah. so in a way yes yes it makes sense how challenging is it to go to the role of a performer because i think you performed in london and you yeah. perform in a few places yeah. also so how 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 challenging or how easy is it to go into that zone from a studio zone that is also a reason for me to pulling down my weight <laughs> because uh, just for the last 2 years i've been into right. the show business and uh, of course i've done concerts uh, in four countries in 2 years so i'm planning for more the forthcoming years also so i thought okay i should be you know presentable on stage uh, because i was not liking my own concert images concert mm-hmm. pics so i thought okay i have to pull down my weight so that was that is also one of the reason uh, i really love performing uh, on stage because uh, right from my uh, schooling because i did my school in don bosco egmo mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, on all special days i used to have a I used to have a performance in the be an annual day a parents day a teachers day whatever it is so uh, i think the students of don bosco uh, they have just lifted me up so well and they have just encouraged me that was that initial point at that initial push where i had okay i had to take music as a serious yeah. business in my life 
So any day performing is something something else I, that is that too in front of ten thousand, twenty thousand mm-hmm. audience. That is something gives a big high, and uh, at that point only really you know the kind of success, the height of success your song has reached to public. Because every time you just announce your next song, the kind of shout mm. uh, you get from the audience that gives a big high. That that gives us a big tonic for the for our forthcoming works. Yeah. So he spoke about collaboration with stars. Yeah. I'd like to draw about your collaboration with particular singers. Yeah. Um, I we just heard Ray Lara Rao, okay. a lovely melody, and again by Shreya Goshal. Talk to us about your association with Shreya Goshal and how it has evolved over the albums. Shreya Goshal is a darling, and uh, you know, uh, it's been I think more than eight to ten years of collaboration, and uh, each and every time, I used to witness my own songs. If I bring a sixty percent track from my side, she always excels, like giving one fifty percent, two hundred percent every time. So that happens to invite to each and every track of mine, and I feel uh, so blessed uh, working with a legendary singer. And uh, the kind of um, the amount of time she takes for each and every song, and uh, the amount of time she gives for the language. that really matters most and then she just makes a point each and every line you know uh, we have to convey what it means in our own language and she gets a total feel of the song and uh, she just makes sure that the whole day is for the song mm. she doesn't have any other distraction mm-hmm. so when she comes in the morning uh, easily it takes like you know 5 to 6 hours for us to dub a song mm-hmm. and she is all is at mind you know so humble and she gives her time for the for the song for the language so that 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 kind of uh, that point really admires me a lot and i think these things makes us to work again and again and she has a big respect for for southern music um, because she feels like there there's like more soul there's more of melodic uh, uh, feel in southern songs so whenever i give a call to a uh, okay shreya i got a song when we are going to dub it maximum in a day or two she somehow finds time and she says okay i'm here now mm-hmm. come to bombay so so that's how it happens and so speed up so speed up for so that's when we're talking about other singers but then iman the singer something uh, that that happens very rarely yeah, yeah. Come, especially compared to other music directors are we going to see you sing a little more what i think is because whenever a song is been performed by another singer and if that song becomes a big hit uh, he or she gets popular with the song and if i sing that song even though the song becomes a huge hit i take the credit of being a music composer alone yeah. i love to take that alone yeah. i don't want to you know take the uh, uh, appreciation of a singer too yeah. and for that is I feel okay that is that is that is not my job. Uh I love music composing and I and and in, and in fact the credit what I get as a composer that is more than enough for me. Mm-hmm. So I feel that okay a singer when I when I just give a singer even to a newcomer mm-hmm. even that song becomes a hit that becomes a a big life life changing moment for them. So uh I see that okay a singer gets an opportunity to sing not a music composer. Mm-hmm. But worst case if because like there are there are there are songs like where the director he feels he because insists, he uh, yeah. insists uh which happened like that way even for Riyana Mahabri Pandit yeah. Lema and of course many other song Onnum Purila Sundare Sundare for Kumki. Of course we we dubbed with four to five singers mm. the same song and then the later I mean the director said okay I'm not getting the feel. the first feel what he had given with the tune. you better you sing it <laughs> and okay so like that happened 